hey welcome to the linux channel so whenever uh, uh, people uh, study about uh, linux uh, device drivers uh, and uh, often i seen even with my uh, students uh, they have this huge confusion and uh, some kind of illusion about the same and in spite of uh, them uh, going through books like uh, uh, you know linux uh, device drivers and stuff like that uh, uh still they have that uh, some kind of uh, a confusion uh, about the same so often i have uh, sessions uh, uh, whenever i teach with them then i thought this is something very common and i, I thought uh, let me shoot a video about the same so that maybe maybe useful for everyone uh, to get that big picture see this video is not about how do you write a device drivers or stuff like that so there are a lot of videos or uh, uh other online content you can find about the same and where in which you can uh, <laughs> go through the same and as well as you have wonderful examples in uh, linux uh, device drivers so perhaps in the future i may shoot uh, some uh, few videos about uh, specific uh, you know uh, cases uh, some about network driver some about uh, sound card or usb or uh, something like that so anyway if you don't know the big picture how can you understand about uh, you know writing device drivers itself so so one thing they have confusion is uh, when they think about device drivers they often think about uh, it's a real uh, physical device all the time so this is where the confusion itself starts so you think about a device driver it can be a virtual uh, device it's just an instance in the kernel as simple as that so every time you create a driver instance uh, just imagine that you are creating an uh, instance uh, the way uh, kernel facilitates you and then uh, you link the main important apis like uh, you know open close uh, read and write apis like that and apart from that you can uh, configure the driver with any other special uh, apis or io control or anything like that so this is what essentially happens uh, you know uh, the overall objective of a device driver so that uh, if a device driver instance is created uh, when you read that uh, you know device it gives some data so if it is networking uh, uh, device uh, like nic card or something like that you may have some uh, uh you know packets which may be coming out through a port or something like that and uh, if you do a write operation you can send packets through that port and if it is some storage uh, device uh, then uh, you can read the tracks and sectors of your i mean data in the tracks and sectors of your hard disk or something like that so this is essentially what is the big picture of the device driver so if you go through the linux kernel source you know we can take some few examples this is also always i suggest you even before you go through the ldd book or if you go through any online source about device driver or any tutorial about the same first you go through the linux existing linux kernel source itself because you can see the implementation of device drivers as a real example if you have started already kernel programming and if you understand about some subsystems of the linux kernel or uh, the big picture of the linux kernel source and apart from that some subsystems let it be networking let it be storage or stuff like that other than that if you are very new to device drivers you can just uh, go here and you can explore since i am uh, into networking domain uh, let us uh, see an example you can go to net folder and then uh, you can go to ethernet because than any other uh, networking uh, uh, device ethernet is easy to understand so you can go to ethernet and uh, you can go one of the most popular uh, nic card platform is intel uh, uh, nic cards and apart from that uh, inside the uh, intel nic cards uh, you can go through the gigabit uh, you know driver for the same so you can go through this e1000 or e1000 e anything you can go inside and then you can have a look you can see here you know e1000 main and they have this code since it's a real device driver uh, the code will have uh, apis uh, corresponds to that basic uh, driver apart from that the code will also have uh, other uh, platform dependent uh, you know initialization because essentially when you uh, access the nic card you have to access a specific address location which is you know uh, coupled to that nic card's uh, uh, hardware so it may have some kind of uh, initialization it may have some kind of uh, uh, you know hard coded part uh, where they may uh, 
code the address locations and uh, stuff like that you can see here uh, the device uh, variants and other stuff it's been you know coded this way so we can go to other files eth tool so you can see here uh, the code corresponds to eth tool is over here so whenever you configure the nic card uh, uh, you know special features i have discussed in many videos about eth tool so you can search and then you can go through the same so if you configure any uh, special features of you know you can go to videos and uh, you can uh, find i have discussed about eth tool and i have also done a quick uh, source code walk of eth tool in the user space and the kernel space so with the eth tool you can configure any uh, uh, you know features of your hardware nic card so this is completely different uh, because uh, eth tool allows you to configure the features of that hardware nic card which means you are uh, you know uh, from the user space you are telling to the device driver do something like this uh, uh, whether it is some offload whether it is uh, you know uh, 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 gro generic receive offload or it can be any such features so if you configure the same or if you tell the same uh, via eth tool uh, command in user space it will be passed down to the kernel space and from the kernel space it will be obviously passed down to that respective uh, device hardware and from there it goes to the uh, real hardware itself so that it gets configured in the uh, running uh, instance of that firmware because this is not something you set it permanently you just set it as long as that nit card is uh, uh, alive and it is you know working in the uh, real time or in a, in the run time so so you can go through the same so if you come back you have this uh, corresponding code uh, for that eth tool command and so on so on so on i don't want to go much in depth because uh, the objective of this video itself is to give that big picture so this way you can go through that kernel source you are not copying end of the day you are just trying to understand the kernel source and you are trying to understand the big picture so after that if you gone through uh, many examples you can go through any uh, you know file system uh, our main uh, the storage drivers as well you can go here and you can uh, explore the same about uh, hard disk and other uh, device drivers and then uh, you'll get some kind of you know fair idea and then you can go through uh, ldd book linux device drivers uh, uh, book and then uh, you can have that you know big picture as well apart from what i'm going to discuss in this video so ldd book i have provided a link uh, you can go through uh, the quick links uh, i have created for students so you can go through the same and then uh, you can get that basic uh, intro and other examples so you can go through inside the ldd book so apart from that uh, i would like to discuss the essential point of shooting this video itself is i would like to discuss some kind of you know big picture essentially when you create a driver uh, let's take again an example if you do an if config you have these three uh, device driver instances one is for eth0 one is for local host and the other one is this uh, you know some imaginary port so if you see here in this eno or uh, yeah this is not eth0 i'm sorry so this is eno1 uh, my nic card so if you see here eno1 is a device driver instance created for the real physical interface whereas if you see the local host it's a virtual device driver instance it's just an instance of device driver when it is created inside the uh, linux kernel source the user space assumes anything as a device driver as simple as that so uh, you have this uh, local host driver instance so the user space thinks this also is a, any other you know driver instance as simple as that you should understand user space never cares about whether it is a real hardware or just it's a virtual hardware or something like that or else in other words virtual uh, device driver instance so it really doesn't care and it really doesn't know either so it's all magic done inside the kernel uh, and uh, you know it's not a business for user space applications as simple as that so keep that uh, idea or the keep that uh, big picture in your mind and uh, try to simplify and often i see in uh, these job interviews they try to kind of you know complicate they kind of ask as if some device driver is some magical stuff inside uh, linux kernel so there's nothing about it it's just uh, you know uh, data structure instance and then if it is a real hardware of course you have that uh, main uh, 
hardware related code most of the times and if it is some uh, virtual uh, device like this local host or something you may have uh, just the basic uh, you know code which is uh, you know corresponding to that operation so same way if you do df command you can see here uh, there are uh, two uh, hard disks in my system you have that sda and then uh, you have that other hard disk in my system so df which is not mounted i can even mount the same yeah so if you do again df you can see here there is another hard disk i have two hard disks in this system uh, you can see here sda and then sdb uh, so this is what it is so same way you can even create any uh, virtual uh, uh, storage device you can do some uh, ram device and then you can mount it on your system and then it is going to show as if there is a driver instance or a device driver existing in your uh, system so this is what is the entire big picture so having said that let me take you back to my uh, diagram which i did in dia so you can see here this logic if we apply you can have device drivers literally anywhere and uh, some drivers uh, can be real hardware uh, specific drivers uh, so let's assume these are your virtual devices and this is your physical device so it can be something associated with a physical hardware or else it can be just a virtual hardware itself so so far i have discussed about a quick uh, basic overview because uh, even before shooting this video i have done another picture so that it gives even more uh, a clear picture and the big picture of this entire uh, device drivers uh, inside the linux kernel source so if i uh, expand this picture you can see here i have done another picture so you can see here you have this uh, uh, main linux kernel you have the entire uh, kernel instance or the linux uh, kernel uh, space which is essentially the software layer which is on top of the real you know hardware layer so if you see here in the hardware let us classify you have this uh, networking and the storage and in the networking part you have uh, in this case let's assume you have two uh, physical uh, devices uh, or physical uh, nic cards one is eth0 and the other one is eth1 so for each uh, physical nic card you have a device driver instance which is coupled to that uh, specific hardware port uh, uh, network port so in this case you can see here you have a device driver which is corresponds to this you know eth0 nic card and you have another device driver instance for this eth1 uh, uh, nic card so same way if you see here you have another uh, device driver instance for this imaginary local loopback uh, uh, you know network interface since it is a virtual uh, network interface i have kept it over here so that it is not associated with any real you know hardware uh, device but having said so in the user space like i said before you can just do any operations uh, ping lo I'm, i'm sorry ping you know local host so you can do that way or else you can do uh, this way 127.0.0.1 so it really assumes that this is also a physical uh, device it doesn't know which is virtual and which is physical as simple as that so that is the reason you have the device driver instance but this is not linked to any uh, real physical hardware and same way if you see here in the case of storage you have this sda and sdb you can imagine sda is a hard disk and sdb is a ssd drive or sdb is some usb drive or something like that and you have this uh, device driver instance coupled for each you know real physical hardware same way you can also have storage uh, device driver instances for virtual devices or some kind of you know uh, ram mounted uh, you know storage uh, uh, you know uh, device <laughs> so this is what it is so with this i hope this gives a sort of you know big picture so device drivers are nothing but it can be uh, you know physical uh, i mean device drivers coupled to physical hardware devices or peripherals or else it can be even virtual devices and this drivers creates that kind of you know access with that you can do you can uh, you know read the data you can write the data Uh, with that read write apis and then uh, you can write that api handlers inside the device drivers and also you can have a mechanism to open or initiate the same and then close or else 
uninitialized the same so this is what essentially happens if it is some kind of uh, uh, cd rom driver whenever you do close operation uh, while accessing the driver let's assume uh, you can uh, couple uh, the eject and then uh, you know retrieve that cd tray uh, to that close operation so whenever you uninitialize this driver it can automatically you know uh, pull back the tray inside that you know cd or uh, you know dvd drive so stuff like that so this is what essentially when you write device drivers you need to keep all these aspects in the mind and then you write the device drivers but having said so it is not so complicated to imagine it is very simple it's just a data structure instance and then you are coupling you know some apis to that data structure and if it is a real hardware you need to assign some kind of addressing and other stuff so that it does that respective action in the real physical hardware which you can touch and see whereas if you have a virtual driver sky is the limit you can just do anything in the device driver because it's just imaginary and it is virtual but for the user space applications they really don't damn care about whether it is physical driver or else a virtual driver because they really don't know the difference between anything which is physical or virtual so this is the reason when you do a ping of local host you can see here this happens so fast 0.0 you know 68 or 54 milliseconds versus you do a ping of say let's let me uh, ping to my router you can see here it takes around 0.5 milliseconds because this is a real physical device versus that is an imaginary device inside your ram so since it is inside your ram it just happens so fast that's why it is 0.052 milliseconds or so and in case if you do the same uh, ping command of local host in much more powerful computer maybe this may be even more reduced and much more it will be faster so with this uh, i would like to conclude this video so what i'm going to do is uh, uh, when you go to video uh, uh, when you go to the video description uh, i'm going to attach the links where i publish this video in uh, the linux channel uh, website uh, somewhere in the videos uh, section and i'm going to also export these images so that you can refer in case if you want it for any reference and uh, stuff like that just like the way i do for um my other uh, videos as well so in case if you have any questions uh, be in touch via mail thank you once again for watching this video stay tuned have a nice day bye bye